old pandemic. It's truly incredible what's going on up there. 50 million acres of trees are dead by the last decade. It's because of climate change, mostly. They say there's a number of other reasons. There's always other reasons. It's, it's sort of like our weather might or might not be caused by climate change. Welcome to the 21st century. This is the way that it's going to be. It's going to get worse. That's plain to see. Welcome to the 21st century. And the reality is that our climate is going to keep on changing faster and with greater and more unexpected impacts. I'm a professional engineer and an environmental researcher. I started reading academic journal articles about climate science in the early 1990s. What I found was that counterintuitively, and to my great consternation, the media was under-reporting climate science. They were not exaggerating like everyone said. What they were saying was conservative relative to the actual discoveries being described in the journals. It was as if they were not reading the literature, or more likely, not understanding it. Day two, going up the pass, Raton Pass, my first pass, up the trip, let's go. The science itself is likely the most complicated ever known. It's difficult enough for the dendrochronologist to understand the cryologist. That's the tree ring scientist and the ice scientist. So my mission, if I choose to accept, is to show you climate changes happening now and to help you out with a little science along the road. I'm on my way to the Rocky Mountains for a 5,000 mile road trip from Texas to Montana. I'll cross the Continental Divide 11 times and I'll camp at 10 campgrounds five of which have been clear-cut because of falling tree hazards from dead beetle-killed trees. This beetle pandemic is the largest ever known. It is caused by the mountain pine beetle, and it's nearly 20 times larger than the last record-breaking beetle infestation that happened in Alaska and ended just after the turn of the 21st century. That outbreak took more than a decade to kill three and a half million acres of forest, this outbreak has killed a total of 52 million acres in the last decade, and 18 million of those acres of new attack were recorded in 2007 and 2008. Welcome to the 21st century. This is the way that it's going to be. It's going to get worse. Just plain to see. Welcome to the 21st century. Welcome to the 21st century. There is trouble in southern Colorado. This campground has been used by my family for nearly four decades. It's isolated at the end of a long gravel road in the Lagarita Mountains in the Rio Grande National Forest. I haven't been here in a couple of years, and it looks like there has been a significant outbreak of spruce budworm in my absence. A little worm that eats the uh, buds off the spruce trees, stresses them, makes them more susceptible to other maladies, and it really stresses them just like you were to have all of your buds eaten off every spring. Well, this is a pupa. It turns into a, a little moth spreads the destruction. This is what spruce buds are supposed to look like. They're not all brown and eaten off on the ends. I could tell you where this campsite is, of course, but I would have to kill you later. It's been drier than usual every time I've been here for the last 20 years. When I was a kid, it would rain every afternoon. We were forever trying to keep our boots dry. The dryness is a sign of perpetual drought 
that comes with a changed climate. You see, even if we get normal or maybe even more rainfall and snow, the longer warm season, because spring is coming earlier and autumn is coming later, means that the drought continues. The South Fork of the mighty Rio Grande. Just west of here on Wolf Creek Pass, the spruce beetle has been active for the last 10 years, but nothing like what's going on in the Waimanuchi Wilderness area to the north. There's a brand new spruce beetle outbreak there that's over 150,000 acres. It's spreading out of the wilderness area and up into the Rio Grande headwaters. Spruce kill is not as easy to see as pine beetle kill. The trees turn brownish gray, not bright red. They seem to disappear into the forest. The gray blends well with green. The sudden aspen decline is showing up all along the highway to the north towards Glenwood Springs. In the past, aspen have always grown back from disease infections and avalanches and fire and insects, but this time is different. The aspen are not growing back at all. The forest professionals are perplexed, but this is what they say. In 2008, there was over half a million acres of aspen decline in Colorado alone, and it was advancing rapidly. This decline is caused by multiple infestations and infections all occurring at the same time. The trees are just too weak from stress to fend these things off. Driving north, as we get closer to Glenwood, the pine beetle makes a dramatic appearance. The pine beetle kills the tree the first year, but the needles remain green. The second year, the lodgepole turned nearly blood red, and the ponderosa turned a bright orange red. The third year, they brown off. The fourth year, the needles have dropped, and the gray skeleton trees blend back into the forest. Usually, well over half the trees in a forested area will be killed by an attack over a period that lasts for several years or more. But quite often, because the attack is so tremendous now, the majority of the trees are being killed. Well, this is truly an unfortunate surprise. I'm at Lowry Campground near Dillon Reservoir on I-70, about 65 miles west of Denver, about five miles north of Breckenridge. This is the aftermath of a mountain pine beetle attack. This was once a dense lodgepole pine forest. The trees have been cut to keep them from falling on campers. The Forest Service pamphlet handed out by the campground host maintains that this is a natural occurrence and the forest will grow back in 100 years. But in 100 years, the climate in the Rockies will simply be too hostile for this forest, or maybe any forest, to grow back. This is what the campground looked like before it was clear cut. The photos are from the Dillon Ranger District. The threshold is upon us, the barriers are down, ecosystems collapsing uh, without a sound. We have crossed the great divide, traveled to another place. We are familiar with devastated without grace. Not one we are familiar with devastated without grace. A significant majority of forest professionals today, forest agencies and non-governmental authorities, are all now laying the majority of the blame for these various forest infestations and diseases squarely upon climate change. But very few have yet to recognize the vast changes still to come and the impacts of those changes on the regrowth of forests in the future. 
Without the trees, the water retreats, the earth bakes and crumbles away. The trees are the cloud machines you see when they're gone, few will stay. As the tall ones fall, the fuel load rises like never before seen. When the aftermath of the firestorm is nothing in the spring. In the aftermath of the firestorm is nothing in the spring. Climate in mountainous areas changes similarly to polar climate. It changes somewhere around two to three times faster than the rest of the world. The reason is because there is simply less snow now. Trees and rocks absorb almost 10 times as much heat from the sun as snow. So less snow means more heat, more drought, more snow melt, and more stress on the trees. The winter season is already a month shorter in the Rockies than it was for most of the 20th centuries. And because of less snow, there is even more warming here than in the rest of the world. And no, I did not get a discount on my campground fee. During the 20th century, the Rocky Mountain West warmed 70% more than the rest of the world. The Colorado River Basin averaged 120% warmer than the rest of the world. The fire season length has increased by 78 days and the number of wildfires has increased 400%. Glaciers and Glacier National Park will be gone by 2022. These observed changes are likely to be more than 99% outside of what could be expected through natural climate variations alone. There is a fundamental ecological shift happening in the Rockies right now. It's called an abrupt climate change. This outbreak is 20 times greater than the last to occur. Ecosystem collapse is occurring in the Arctic. This foretells the future of lower latitudes. The IPCC has concluded with high confidence that substantial changes in ecosystems are very likely to occur with only three and a half to five degrees of warming. Monday the 24th, I think it's the 24th, I think it's Monday. I'm on my way to uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, last night, Lowry was eerie. I've never camped in a clear-cut campground before. The ghost trees, they're different at Lowry, they're not the disappearing brown and gray trees. Got some interstate driving to do. A lot of dead trees to see. This is really cruddy. I mean, I enjoy the weather, but it's really kind of cruddy for taking pictures. Well, what you can't see through here is that there's still a lot of red trees. It's mixed in with brown this year. Those trees that died last year are brown now. They're gray. Some combination of the two. The new kill is red. I don't know if it's as bad as it was last year. I don't think it was quite as bad shouldn't have been with all the extra rain we've had the last couple of years. 
there's a lot of dead trees and there's some that died this year which means that infestation is ongoing. Rocky Mountain National Park, August 24, Tuesday. Got some dead trees up here, 15-25%. Not a happy place. I'm going to Bear Lake. Remember to turn the camera on about halfway up. I took a comparison photo at Moraine Park Campground earlier this morning. I was there with my wife and girls in 2007. There were zero beetle killed trees on this side of the park then. And that is certainly not the case now. This part of the park is on the east side of the Continental Divide. The divide basically splits the park down the middle on a north-south line. And yes, this is the same continental divide that the science guys were talking about just a few years ago when they said the beetle would not cross the divide. Okay, kids, don't try this at home. I'm an expert. I've been doing this for 30 years. This map shows the forest in Colorado. There are many different kinds of forests that basically grow at different elevations where different local climates exist. Lower elevations are hotter and drier and different trees grow in those places. This is northern Colorado from Denver to the Wyoming state line. This map shows the red kill where we are headed next. There was a lot of red kill up here when this map was made in 2007. In 2008, the attack had expanded even more. This is what's left of Timber Creek Campground on the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park. Park Service had to cut down the trees. They were a hazard to campers. Last year they cut down about a third. This year they've completely clear cut the campground. Somewhere about here was where camp was in 2007. This moose ambled through our camp right about here. These wonderful log toilets are on the National Register of Historic Places. trying to figure out what, how I can show you what this campsite used to be like. Check this out. These are the trees. These are all tree stumps. I don't know how many trees that was. There's a whole bunch. Now I gotta get set, get all this stuff taken care of. Take some pictures of the mountain, with a little bit of light. Go on to the next place. It's all good. It's just a different kind of good.
The Canadian Forest Service is saying that a worst case scenario appears to have developed in Canada this season. That 2009 just passed. Canada is the hardest hit in North America with over two thirds of the 52 million acres of red kill. Northern Alberta is the front line of the attack in Canada and they have been experiencing an extreme outbreak since 2003 when one forest ranger said that the beetles fell like rain from the sky. But it's been cooler and wetter in Canada and the U.S. for the last few years and everyone has been hoping for a reprieve. And Northern Alberta did get a reprieve. Last winter, 2008 and 2009, saw a significant die-off, the beetle, one of the only places to have a significant die-off because of the lack of abnormally warm and dry weather we've seen for over a decade. But unfortunately, this last summer, 2009, saw one of the largest migrations of beetles into any area that has ever been seen, and that area was northern Alberta. <laughs> an aspen decline in front of us you see trees that have lots of dead branches and no crown you see yellow trees up here that's sudden aspen decline it's happening in a forest that is weak and there are different diseases and insects affecting individual trees now directly ahead of us is a great deep green chunk of aspen now directly ahead of us is a sick patch now directly ahead of us, I don't need to stay in my lane, a really sick batch right there on the left. You know how brown all that crud is? To the left. What, what color is that? That's a dull green, uh, olive green. Those are aspens too, but they're not well. They're not healthy. If they stay unhealthy long enough, they'll die. And that's what happens with sudden aspen decline. They just get sicker and sicker and sicker and they die. The environment where they can live no longer exists. So they don't live. They don't come back. Just like this forest we're looking at now that's dying. These red trees and the dead trees in between that you can't see because they look too much like the green trees. It's dying. It's not going to come back reason it's not going to come back 
is because the temperature will just be too warm. The reason they're not going to come back is the same reason that they're dying, because their environment has changed. The limits within what they can live no, more, no longer exist. The reason why the pine beetle is attacking so, so many trees, so many more, 20, 30 times more, soon to be 200 to 300 times more trees now than have ever been attacked before. It's because the environment of the tree is changing and the tree is getting sick. The trees themselves are very unhealthy. You don't die of old age. You die of something. In this case, the trees are dying of the pine bark beetle, the mountain pine beetle, the spruce beetle, the pinion beetle, the aspen leaf miner. They're dying of scale diseases, of rusts, of cankers, of blights. They're dying of fungus infections. And they're dying because their environment is going away and they can no longer live in this new warmer environment. Very simple. This is Steamboat Lake State Park, just north of Steamboat Springs in north central Colorado. The Beetle Army came to Steamboat three or four years ago. Very little has stood in their path. This is the island at the park. There were about 25 campsites here before the Park Service had to clear cut the campground. I guess the campsites are still here. The forest is gone. A state forester sent me these panoramic images of before and after the clear cutting. It's difficult to see that these two images are taken of the same place, but look at the mountain at the end of the big arrow. The locals say that the beetle is giving rise to emerging vistas, but the locals never mention the great risk of, and in fact, rarely understand the great world-changing impacts of what is happening here and all across the Rocky Mountain West. It's ninth day, end of the ninth day of the trip. I think I've gone 2,000 miles now. I'm at uh, in northern Colorado, north of Steamboat Springs, at Steamboat Lake. All the trees are cut down here. The third site that I've been to now, all the trees have been cut down. Eerie. It's like a. It's not like anything I've done before. Kind of close to camping on the beach. Got, got clean feet. Clean. Instead of clothes this morning, I really wanted to take a.
bucket bath this evening. That didn't happen. It really is eerie. All the trees cut out. This is one of those things that the scientists and the foresters have been worrying about. This is a pitch tube from a beetle. The tree is trying its best to, to defeat this attack by pushing the beetle out with sap. But this is a fir tree, not a lodgepole or a ponderosa or even a pine. It appears to be being attacked by a pine beetle. And the pine beetles are not supposed to attack fir or spruce. They're pine beetles. Just a uh, standard pitch tube on a seven inch diameter tree. There's a lot of small trees around here. See these guys right here? Those where it went undefeated. There's another little volcano. This is the entry hole. This is where they form their galleries. And you see the little hole in there. The beetle came out and he's she spits her sawdust out that hole and then it kills the tree and the squirrels don't like any of it it dendrochronus ponderosiae our little buddy is not supposed to attack spruce trees either oh look is that a beetle that this three inch diameter lodgepole successfully pitched out I can't tell. Tough being old. I'm gonna take it off and go back to camp and get my glasses and look at it. Just an insect doing its job. And in the background, just a squirrel doing its job. So this is a natural occurrence. Some would say freakishly natural. Natural nonetheless. The last time it happened, two, three thousand years ago, maybe five or six, it happens when we have great desertification across the interior of North America. When the Great Plains turn to a sea of shifting sand, which happens. Uh, it's happened four or five times, I think in the last ice age or two. When that happens, there's regime shift all over. Everything in the mountains changes as well. This is an example. It just takes a few degrees temperature change to drastically alter a, a forest ecosystem. What we're seeing is a forest ecosystem changing to something else. We're not sure what it'll be. We weren't around last time it happened, but we know it most likely won't be what it was before. This talk of the forest won't be the same for a hundred years because the forest will take a hundred years to grow back. Well, this forest won't grow back. It'll come back as something different. This is an example of sick aspen tree sudden aspen decline. I don't know if this is a canker or a rust or a fungal infection or something else. I just don't know. That sound is just not right. It sounds like a bunch of dead leaves blowing down the street. That's not supposed to sound that way. Forest Road 129 into Wyoming. We're following the headwaters of the Snake River. That's what this is right here, the headwaters of the Snake River. You can stand with one foot on each side of it.
It's all their fault. Wyoming State Highway 70, August 27th. Southern Wyoming Medicine Bow National Forest, Nowhere Land, mile 2039. Lots of red kill on my way to the snowy range. I've traveled about 120 miles since I left Steamboat Lake this morning. Seen a total of about a dozen vehicles, if that many. Red trees the whole way. The Canadian Forest Service did a study in 2006. They looked at the red kill in British Columbia, which was about 20 million acres then. They estimated that those dead trees would emit, not absorb, as much carbon dioxide as they decay, as half of Canada's entire transportation fleet. In 2008, there were 37 million acres of red kill in British Columbia. Today, in 2009, the greenhouse gas emissions from just the dead trees in British Columbia equal greenhouse gas emissions from all of Canada's transportation sources. And the study says these emissions from the dead trees will happen every year for the next 20 years. I met three Forest Service employees way back there in the woods. They were looking for a site to place a new snowmobile parking area. We talked at length about the beetle attack and climate change. One of the biggest things that the forester of the bunch was worried about was never before seen sterilization that could happen with wildfire. Not the burning of the dead standing red trees, but from the tremendous fuel load close to the ground when the trees start to fall. This kind of thing has just not happened before on any scale, even remotely close to this. All that fire so close to the ground over such a huge region just scared the pants off of that forester. You can see it in their eyes. When I talked to the ice scientist in Greenland even, you could see they were scared. They were truly scared. Fully half the trees are significantly affected in this forest. Doesn't look that way from the road at all, but from all of the damage, this year damage, last year damage on still live trees, and of course the increased number of dead trees that you can actually see from within the forest. It's just a mess. You walk along on the ground and everything will be just fine. You look up and there's all these red trees. Once again, the rangers thank me for brightening up their day. And then they were somewhat happy when I told them, well, we know now how to behave. We've never experienced an abrupt climate change before. So we don't know how to behave. Now we have a better idea of what's going on. So we can use all of our new knowledge to plot a course of new behavior.
Scientists have been telling us for decades that insect infestations would be greater on a warmer planet. I always thought that they meant roaches and mosquitoes. These historic attacks on our forest may be natural or maybe not. The forest have always grown back in the past, but in the past, our climate was stable. The pine bark beetle and the spruce bark beetle, the aspen leaf miner and the aspen decline. It's not just the groves of trees that are dying, not just the mountain sides that are dying. Ranges of mountains and trees are all dead. But this is not the future, this is happening now. Rocky Mountain High will be no longer. Rocky Mountain High. The U.S. Forest Service says that all of the mature lodgepole forest in the U.S. will be killed by the pine beetle not long after the year 2013. That's about 11% of the coniferous forest in the Rocky Mountain West. Four to six degrees of warming is all it takes to make a sea of sand out of the Great Plains. What we are seeing now is the beginning of an abrupt climate change. These things have happened many times in the past naturally, but today mankind is changing the CO2 concentration in our atmosphere 10,000 times faster than anything that has happened naturally in the last 65 million years. Hundreds of millions of trees are dying, hundreds of millions of trees are dead. This is bigger than you and me. This is a giant catastrophe. This is what the scientists have been warning about. This is what happens with climate change. What have we done? What have we done? What have we done? Our climate has changed beyond the bounds of the evolution of Earth's present ecological systems. The new discoveries in climate science show that the solutions exist to repair our deteriorating climate. We just have to convince our leaders to start spending money on our environment like they are spending it on our institutions that are too big to fail. Because Earth is too big to fail. Rocky mountains are warming, as fast as the Arctic Ocean. The trees are all red and the forest is dying. What have we done? What have we done? One more time. What have we done?